everyone. Thank you for watching our YouTube page, Go Matos. Uh, we have another special episode of Conversations Abroad with a very special friend, Diana Robles. She's probably the most powerful woman in the world, second to uh, right under Oprah Winfrey, but she's getting real close with her photography skills. She's the owner of Love Print Photography, and it is in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. And what she specializes in maternity uh, photo shoots and photo sessions. And also we have a very sweet friend of ours. Her name is Jennifer Martinez. You can see her on Instagram, Forever Jennifer. Jennifer with the Y and uh, we're so proud of her because she has made it full-time to be a full-time blogger and to uh, take social media uh, very seriously so these are two great entrepreneurs and I'm hoping that this discussion could help us give us further into uh, uh, further detail and what being an entrepreneur is hey guys we are so excited that you guys are on our conversations abroad I just want to kick off with a question um, you guys are both full-time into this so my question to you is what made you make that decision of being an entrepreneur not only that but quitting your jobs and going into this full-time for me um, first of all I just want to say thank you so much for having us on your channel I'm so honored to be a part of this so thank you I love you guys and I miss you so much <laughs> um, so for me, this started, first of all, I've always loved photography. I always was the one with the camera and all of our family functions, going on vacation and stuff like that. But um, when my husband was in the military um, back in 2011, 2012, um, it was very difficult for us financially. Um, then, you know, I, I got pregnant with my son. Um, I couldn't afford a photographer, like for his newborn session and stuff like that. So I, I ended up asking my brother, like, hey, can I just borrow your camera? I didn't have one at the time. And I was like, I'm gonna do my own newborn photo shoot. It's very different <laughs> than my skills now, but um, it was um, the only way that I can have like newborn pictures of him because I couldn't afford a, a photographer at the time. So um, just documenting his whole first life, um, I fell in love with like actual photography and not just like clicking away, you know? Um, so I started really learning the camera, asking some of my husband's like military friends and their wives if I can take pictures of them. They would say yes, of course. So just getting all that practice in, I really, really like grew a passion for it. Um, then I started chart like because we were struggling financially, I started charging, you know, a little bit here and there um, and really thought to myself, like, you know what, I think I could do this full time. I mean, I didn't have any other job, but like just just having that like supplemental income was really, really helpful. Um, but once my husband got out of the out of the military and we moved back up to New Jersey, I was contemplating whether I was going to keep, you know, going with the business and try to establish myself up here in New Jersey or. <clears throat> or go back to like a regular nine to five job. And um, I really felt like God was tugging at my heart saying, you know, like this is like, just do it, just go for it. And I really felt like encouraged by, you know, my family and friends to like do it. So um, I did and honestly, it, it flourished to something that I would have never ever imagined. And I always say like, if it wasn't for God, I definitely, Love Print would not exist if it wasn't for God. So um, I'm just so glad, you know, just the way everything happened. It wasn't an easy journey. It was actually very, very difficult. Um, but I'm so thankful that, you know, God opened the doors and it just, honestly, it just went to a level that I would have never imagined. Wow. What was the, what was the moment that you, you said to yourself, okay, this is what's got, this is God over here or um, because if you're making a big decision, uh, obviously you want to uh, uh, pray about it and you want to see God about it. Or is it something where it was just like, okay, after the fact, like, oh, this is all lining up and I think God has given me this position. I feel like um, when I first established myself down in North, I don't know if I mentioned it was in North Carolina that my husband was, um, we were stationed in North Carolina. Um, it was... I think when I received a message from one person that I ended up working with, um, down in North Carolina, they always say that all the military wives become photographers. Like everyone is a photographer <laughs> in North Carolina. So um, I was just another military wife that became a photographer. So mm -hmm. I remember one time, um, one of my clients, she posted on Facebook that she was looking for a photographer. And 
every like she she said she received literally 52 photographers in a matter of minutes saying like i want to work with you you know this person charges this much but i can do it for 50 bucks i can do it for 20 bucks i'll do it for free like it, just, it was just crazy and in my head i'm like i can't compete with free you know what i mean like i'm in this business to make money like so i would just put my my you know my link there and just you know see what happens and i would get like you know a few hits here and there but she said something to me one day and she was like diana like when i looked at your work it spoke to me differently mm -hmm. and of all the message like not only did i receive 52 uh, comments of photographers who wanted to work with me I received 15 separate like private personal messages saying like hey I can do it for this much I can and root like just it's so cutthroat right so everyone was trying to get these you know clients and I didn't budge I'm just like you know this is what it is and that's it we'll see what happens but when she told me that it really like sunk deep and I was just like some, you know, just the way I like to um, live my life where you don't have to necessarily speak the gospel, live it and let, let you be the testimony, your actions, the way you live. And I felt like I wanted my work to portray that also. So when she said that, it was really like it really stuck out to me. And I was just like, I want it to be different. I want to, um, you know, just portray like like life you know since i do maternity and and what better way of portraying life through than maternity you know like new life growing inside of a woman to me is just so incredible so um just when she said that it was really like what stuck out to me and, and i felt like that's that was god like showing me like this is what you're supposed to be doing you know um so that was my moment <laughs> That's so awesome. And uh, Jennifer Martinez, so uh, I just want to say congratulations on your uh, engagement with Pastor Jordan. Yes, yes, the, the rock is big. I have a small screen right here, but it takes up my whole screen. <laughs> but um, what, what, is, what is your story? You, you just, you just uh, really, um, you, you've just uh, amazed me on uh, what you've accomplished. And also when we're youth leaders at our church, um, it was it was such a privilege uh, working out with you. I always knew that God uh, had a special uh, uh, plan for you. Um, I know you have an awesome story in in, in your teenage years. So tell us a little bit about yourself on uh, how did you get to start. So I have I feel like I have so much to say, but I want to keep it small. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for having me. Like literally, love you guys so much, and I miss you guys. I want to go to back to Mozambique. We are um, for you. So long. Just, just come. I know. I want to go back, but that flight is so long literally so long um but okay so i started blogging and like posting on social media like i think four years ago and i mean i always had like a passion for fashion passion for fashion i love outfits putting together outfits and like styling other people like recommending things for my sister and people would always ask me like oh what are you wearing where'd you get that from and i really didn't think anything of it i just loved fashion you know so then I remember Diana, who's on this call, <laughs> she actually, she approached me and she was like, I love your outfits. I would never forget this. I was at church and I was wearing a blue dress. It was a floral dress. It was like springtime. And she was like, I love your dress. Like literally so cute. You should be a blogger. I was like, what the heck is a blogger? I had no idea about this world. And she had been photographing photographing bloggers and she introduced me to this whole world and so really thank you so much Diana you like mean the world to me so she got me into it and after I started posting just like simple like outfits on Instagram it just like I just became so passionate about it and the fact that I was able to just communicate with other young women and show them how to dress really like you don't have to be scandalous to be beautiful and you could represent christ in every area of your life and even if it's like fashion which you know i i always say that beauty fashion all that stuff is so materialistic and at the end of the day it does not matter what matters is your heart and your relationship with christ so i always try to keep that at the center of what i do um yeah so i just love communicating with the girls that follow me and it's just so amazing 
um, to just see relationships on social media blossom. And I've known some of these girls for like two years and like we just always talk through dms and it's like you're way across the world but like we're still like friends and like they come to me for advice and i just think social media is so powerful and when people are like oh social media is so bad i don't have an instagram i just hate it i'm like girl you don't know what you're missing because you could talk to literally anyone across the world and you can share the gospel and that's what's so beautiful about it um yeah so that's my story uh what, what, what else should i say <laughs> she's ready <laughs> so now now you're in this <clears throat> full-time recently you just quit your job um was it during the quarantine time i think right? right yes okay so covid really pushed me so i was working a nine to five monday through friday and i was juggling my blog which really felt like it took up literally my whole life um so I was juggling a nine to five and then I would blog at night whenever I could I would honestly be working my blog through my nine to five I'd just be on the low like on the computer like you know sneaking and editing um and that's how I knew I was like I am not called to this nine to five life I I hated it I, I just couldn't do it um and reporting to people that just I don't know I can't do it <laughs> so I after COVID like while COVID was happening, they were like, okay, the office is closed. Um, so you had to work from home. And I'm like, oh, my home is like my sanctuary to work on my blog full time, you know? And once like I had to work at my nine to five in my home and my blog, it was just like, I can't do two things at once. It was just tugging at me and I was just so stressed. And I was like, you know what? this is like it's a leap of faith because people were losing their jobs like crazy left and right and i'm like but god was so faithful and he was providing literally collaboration after collaboration after collaboration so if you don't know how like i make my income it's pretty much through brand deals um so like I was just getting collaborations up the wazoo. I was like, God, this is so weird because COVID is happening. I don't know how you're providing this, but I just felt like that was the moment where God was like, just do it. And I have to thank my now fiance who really pushed me and was like, you got it. Like, this is you do it. And so my family's support as well. I just pushed myself and I did it. I saved, I, I wasn't the, stupid with it i made sure to save months you know in advance and i went and i did it <laughs> at a certain point in your in the whole entrepreneur journey did you feel um yeah this is what you love to do but at some point did you feel like you know what i just want to quit all of this this is too much for me this is way over my head than i thought it would be um, Diana, did you, did you ever feel like, okay, I'm just putting this camera in my closet and <laughs> I'm going back to that nine to five job? <laughs> Actually, um, more times than I can count, honestly, <laughs> it was not, it was not an easy journey at all. And you know, my husband could tell you, oh, well, he has told you guys how many times I, you know, cried myself to sleep because of, you know, how difficult it would get sometimes. And, um, you know, just dealing uh, not only with, you know, certain, like I never really had that many issues with clients, just, you know, a handful, but honestly it was um, the community of photographers that, you know, at times would make it difficult for me. And I would just like question, like, it should not be like this. Like we're a community, you know, like we should be lifting each other up and, you know, growing together. And it wasn't like that. So, um, I, I didn't like that kind of, uh, that drama. I didn't like the, I just, I just didn't like it at all. So I, I wanted to quit several times. Um, there's been times where I was just too overwhelmed with the amount of sessions I was doing. So, you know it's more than just like click 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 okay here's your pictures it's like click 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 for two hours and then i'm going home and editing for another five you know so it was just taking up so much time and i was doing a lot of sessions and i just i always told my husband i'm like i want to start my own business so that i can spend more time with my family and more time with my son and now my daughter too you know so it's just like just being so overwhelmed and just so occupied with the business you know, unfortunately, there was a time frame where 
um, I, in a sense, neglected my family and not spending as much time with them. So, you know, I had the total like mom guilt where, you know, now I have a new baby. No, now she's two and a half. But when I got, when I had uh, my daughter, um, you know, she occupied a lot of my time and then I was still working. I felt so terrible for my son because he was so used to being an only child, you know, where any little time that I did have free, I would spend with him. But now it's like the little time I have free, I have to spend with my daughter because she like actually literally needs me to live. <laughs> you know what I mean? She can't, she, she can't like sustain herself. So um, I had such horrible mom guilt and it wasn't, it wasn't until, um, you know, so this was like two and a half years ago that I even I had at that time wanting to quit too. You know what I mean? So it was just a little like different times throughout my whole journey. I've been doing it now for like six years. Um, so throughout my journey, there's been times that I'm just like, you know what? I want to give up. Um, but I'm so glad I didn't. I'm so glad I didn't. We, we had like a little family sit down. We talked about it. My husband shared his his heart with me my son shared his heart with me at seven six years old at the time you know just pouring his heart heart out and, and crying and we all cried as a family and you know it got better so i did like change some things in my business where um i try to be a little bit more like exclusive um and like limited with my availability so that i can you know spend more time with my family and i feel like ever since i made that change um things have been so much better so like I'm I'm so happy now. <laughs> so I only been full time for like two months. So so far I'm very thankful things have gone very well. But when I was like doing my corporate job and doing influencing, I was like honestly so stressed because I felt like I had two full time full time jobs at once. And I mean, you kind of just like get used to it sometimes. You're like, all right, I gotta do this, gotta do this. Just always living a busy lifestyle. And that was me every day. And, but there was a time I was like, you know what? I'm literally done. Like I was stressed, I was breaking out. I was like, ah, oh, my skin, like it was bad, you know? But I mean, with the help of my family, like they're like, no, you started this, you have to continue. Like you are, touching so many people by doing this and like they were just pouring into me um but yeah I've had many nights where I'm like I can't do this this is too much but after I got my priorities right and I was like no this is what I love like God put this in my heart for a reason so I'm gonna continue with it and I'm just gonna push myself and so I would push myself to post every single day push myself to show up on stories every single day and the I read like a quote somewhere like the difference between someone who's successful and someone who's not successful is the push you have to do it when you don't want to you gotta do it when you don't feel like it like there's days i don't feel like posting i do not feel like posting but someone is waiting for you to show up where god has called you to show up so i pushed myself and i'm like i'm gonna do it even when i don't want to that's the trick do it when you don't feel like it yeah okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I, w one thing that it was an interesting question because, you know, the way I see it, I feel like you guys, both you guys, um, you've hit the, I don't want to say the mountaintop, but you've, it seems like you've reached your goal. And for, for me, my, my position or, and I feel like this is probably the same sentiments that a lot of people feel is that they know that they're good at something, but they haven't gotten to that place where it's like not uh it doesn't sustain you uh, and for me like i thank god for uh, for her video because i feel like i'm still an amateur and i'm still uh working at it and i'm still trying to get into ways into to get her, uh get better and then there's discouraging times because i'm just like man how much money did I invest in all of this stuff? And I'm like, where, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm like, Drea, and thank goodness I have such a supportive wife because like anybody else is like, you, you spent way too much money on this. I just want to say I'm so thankful Amazon does not um, deliver to most of me. <laughs> but still, it's still quite an investment and I feel like I haven't uh, gotten to the place and I know God has taken me through a different journey and and supporting my beautiful wife here in Mozambique and, and to also serve the people over here. I know that's my number one mission. I know my mission is for to give my life for God, but I also love a video. And sometimes I get that discouragement, like, man, what, you know, what am I doing? But there's also times where 
I'm encouraged too because I'm just like, man, uh, this ministry needed a video and I did it for them and they're really happy uh, about it. So there's times where like, yeah, you know, okay, this is encouraging. It. And I'm starting to see a glimpse of God showing me something, a picture saying like, you know what? Uh, this is what I have in store for you. And I've tried many different things and I haven't found my niche. I haven't found, found my, my calling, my groove, even though I am a missionary. And I think that's how a lot of people uh, feel like. So, um, you know, maybe you could speak into that, like not giving up, even though you haven't seen the bright light or the, or the success or the first fruits of that. Yeah, the journey of entrepreneur life is definitely it definitely consists of highs and lows like constantly like we can never always be at a high you know what i mean like we have to experience those lows so we can celebrate those highs you know what i mean and um i feel like in the lows is where we where we're um built in a sense where we um learn like all these different ways of um dealing with situations and um you know, sometimes even for myself, like when I'm shooting, um, a lot of the times, like what I post on Instagram, like clients come in and they want exactly what I've done before, you know? So I feel like it limits my creativity in a sense. And so when that happens a lot, I get into this creative rut. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there, I'm at my low again. And I'm like, dang, how can I get out of this? Where can I get inspiration? Like, God, like, give me that creativity because I need to like, think outside the box. I need to do something different. Um, and sometimes it takes longer than I would like. It doesn't just happen overnight. Cause you know, I stayed down in this like rut for a while. And then until God, like, just, I don't know, he just blows my mind with something like with a vision. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what, let's do this. And I try it. And then now, right now I feel like, okay, I'm creative again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I but, love that. Um, you know, but we, this, it's a roller coaster. I'm telling you this entrepreneurial life, it, it has its highs and it has its lows. And I feel like we have to thank God when we're at our high and thank God and be grateful when we're at our lows, you know, and just, just trust that like, we're not going to stay in those valleys. We're not going to stay in those trenches. We're going to, you know, get out of it. And, um, you know, God is always there. He's always by our side, you know, showing us the way you know giving us that creativity because even as a blogger you need to be creative you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's like yeah and rg i'm sorry but like you are killing it my dude like your videos are insane i wish so bad that you were here <laughs> so you <laughs> we can shoot something we i know Film my wedding. Out, like, for real <laughs> exactly because <laughs> you right are now. insane you guys are I can. Mm -hmm. You're insanely talented, you know, and, but I know how you feel. Like, unfortunately, some, like I know with myself, like just what I struggled with in my past, you know, sometimes it still like creeps up where you feel like I'm not good enough. Like I need to be better. Like, how can I be better? And that constant, like, sometimes we put ourselves down, you know what I mean? Like, I know I put myself down, I put myself down sometimes and I'm like, I need to be better. I'm not good enough. I need to. And although that's good to have in a sense, because that pushes you to like, you know, to excellence. But at the same time, we also have to, you know, pat ourselves on the back. Like, look at what God has done, you know, look at where you, where you were and where you are now. And we have to appreciate that journey and appreciate, you know, um, the growth. So that's my little two cents on that. Yeah, I have a side note. When you were talking about like getting creative ideas from like God, I like literally the other day I was reading something and it was like saying God wants to create with you because he, like he is the most creative person ever. He created the world. He created you, me, everything. And like when we feel like we're in a rut, like me as myself, as a blogger, like sometimes I'm like, I post the same thing every day. I'm so sick of it, you know, but it's like, then I go to the Lord, like, where do I get my creativity? Yeah, Pinterest. Yeah, like other influencers. Like I see what other people do, but your unique creativity, like you have to go to the source of creation you know itself and god wants to create with you and that's how you get your unique calling your whatever is unique to you you can find that when you seek the lord and he will give you the ideas that's right so good. you know there are um so many people out in the world who have this entrepreneur spirit and they want to 
um, do what you guys do. They have an idea, they want to launch it, but fear grips them. Fear holds them back and they're like, I can't do it. And my question to you would be, what would be your advice to these certain folks that want to not maybe just like quit their job, but just start like you guys did. Just just take that first step on saying, you know what, I am gonna, I'm gonna just take take a just do it, just do it, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, what would be your advice to them in taking that first step? Uh, I was just gonna say. Um, don't be like a fool because sometimes like we think like oh to be a, a blogger and influencer I gotta get like a two thousand dollar camera so I'm gonna go into debt I'm gonna buy all this equipment and I'm just gonna go with it like it's gonna be great so my advice would be slow it down <laughs> like use your phone like you know just take little steps little by little and once you feel that like this is really your passion and God is really like has favor over it like the worst thing is to be out of the will of God yeah. like if you're out of the will of God it's just your life is not right your relationships are not right but when you know that the Lord has favor upon you and you are walking your path God is just going to provide 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 that's just who he is he's a provider for what he has called you to um so just little by little and watch God provide if it is the will of God. Absolutely. I 150% agree. I know um, my story was slightly different where I did take a leap of faith. First of all, the first step is taking that first step. Like yeah. it's as simple as go for it. You know, use what, use the resources that you already have. You know, like, like Jen said, you don't have to like go into debt and like have to get the best of the best things, you know, like just take the first step. If it's just creating a business plan, then that's great. If it's, you know, if you're a photographer is taking that first picture, then great. Whatever it is, do it. Take that first step and God's going to take care of the rest. For me, um, when I moved back to New Jersey, um, I took a really huge leap of faith. And some people, you know, we sometimes we think like very logically, but I like to think spiritually sometimes. And I'm just like, you know what? God, uh, God's got me, you know, God's got me. So <laughs> in, the actually, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God God is like, whoa, 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 he, no, hold on. <laughs> I'm like, no, you're going to make this work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But what happened with me is that like I, when we first moved back, I didn't have a studio. So I was doing in-home newborn sessions and it was extremely difficult on my back, you know, carrying around all of my equipment, all of my props. Um, I remember I had a session in Hoboken and I had to park like two blocks down and literally carrying everything. And not only did I have to walk two black blocks with all of my equipment, but the guy, the the couple lived on like the 10th or 11th floor. So it's like, uh, thank God I didn't have to climb these steps because then I would have been like, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to come down and carry the things because I can't. <laughs> but, um, you know, but it was just like the back and forth. Like it was yeah. so, so difficult for me. So I told my husband, I'm like, you know what, I know you don't want to hear this right now because he had, it's like fresh out the military. He couldn't find a job. So like financially, we just couldn't afford a studio. But I told him, I'm like, babe, honestly, I need a studio. Like, I can't do it. He's like, no, it's, it doesn't make sense for us to do it right now. We cannot afford it. I will go with you on sessions. I'll bring the stuff in. I'll set up for you. Call me when you're done and I'll come back and I'll break down. Wow. He did like two sessions with me. The second session, he's like, you need a studio. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It's very difficult. So um, I remember he was, I was like, you know what? Let's just look and see, see what happens. You know, we don't know what we can afford it right now. It's not much because we can't afford it, but you know, we're just going to trust God. And I remember we stumbled across a studio in Hawthorne. That was my first studio. Um, I was just like, you know what, this is it. And we had to do all this renovation. Well, the issue was I had no capital. I had no sessions lined up after. Like I was, it was literally my first few months back in New Jersey. So I didn't have clients 
like who knew, like no one knew who I was. Um, I didn't necessarily have a style established yet. Like literally I felt like it was brand new and I just came to New Jersey ready to open up a studio and people are like, you crazy. Like <laughs> with no money with no clients lined up. How are you going to do it? And I just really felt like God was like, I got you. Don't worry. And you know what? I signed those papers and it was literally like the first year was rough. It was rough, you know, but God literally God provided every step of the way. That following year was my biggest growth in my business in terms of like finances. Like we went from nothing to like up here and I just, I couldn't believe it. Like God literally took that and I'm telling you, I, I couldn't believe, like I literally couldn't believe my eyes that my business would grow in such a way when I literally had absolutely nothing. And it truly was a leap of faith. And I remember a friend of mine came and told me, she was like, oh, you know, and before I told anybody I was getting a studio, she came to me and she was like, you know, I had a weird dream with you. And I was like, what? She was like that we were all like, it was in, in our old church. Everyone was just standing around and we were on top of a cliff and you just walked up to the edge of the cliff and you just leaped. Wow. Uh Everyone was like, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> and literally, it was the same week that I signed the papers for my wow. studio. Whoa. And I was just, and she, but she said the thing is that like, everyone was freaking out, but with her, she was like, she, it was weird because she was a little concerned, but she felt at peace. Like me jumping off of a cliff. She was like, God's got her, you know? And I literally had gotten chills and I was just like, Oh my God, I have to tell you a secret. Like I literally just signed a lease for my, for my first studio. And she immediately started crying and she hugged me cause she knew like what, what was going on. Like I didn't have money. I, we, my husband didn't have a job. Um, I didn't have clients lined up. So it's just like, I took that leave of faith. Now I'm not telling everybody to just go and sign studio, like sign leases <laughs> and you know, get $4,000 lighting equipment. I'm not saying <laughs> that, but what I am testifying to is that when God says he's got you, he's really got you. And yeah. he's going to open yeah. up the doors that no man can shut and close the doors that are not for you. And we just have to trust that process. I'm going to fill you in, fill in you guys in a little secret. Like sometimes it's one year. Sometimes I'll be driving and I close my eyes for a few seconds and I wait, open them and I'm like, oh my God, I'm in Africa. Like some, sometimes it hasn't. It still hasn't said it yet. Like I, I jumped it. I jumped it so much into this faith. Like I don't even know where I, where I'm at. And I'm like, how did how did I how did I get here? So that's just like a little that's just like a little secret that I'm, I wanted to reveal to you guys. He shares that secret secret a little more uh, than often during our coffee time. Just to let you know. <laughs> That's I cool. think that's beautiful because I just think that God, you know how like scripture says, like you go from glory to glory, like God doesn't want us to be stagnant. Like he just has so much in store for us. We just have to, like Diana said, take the leap of faith. If it is God's will, God will provide. And it's just like so important to be in tune with with the Lord and really have that communication with him always. And he will provide your answers. He will use people around you. For example, that story that Diana shared, he will use people around you to confirm certain things or let you know when you are not on the right path. Cause I've had people who are like, girl, that ain't for you. What you doing? What you doing? You know? <laughs> so. It just makes me so sad when you see so many people and you see the potential in them and they know they have that entrepreneur spirit and they're just flooding with ideas and passion and you see it in them but the very same thing that holds them back is fear. Yeah. And if it's so encouraging to hear stories like yours because it'll help them see, like see, yeah, it won't be easy. Yeah, you know, it'll be tough in the process, but you know what, as long as God's in the midst of all of it, what, what more can I want? What else do I need? And God will just sustain you, like you said, like along the way. And hopefully this uh, little chat can help them jump off that cliff, like Diana said, figuratively, not 
like <laughs> not literally um but just take it as in yeah we're all gonna fail um sometimes and yeah we're not always gonna get it right in this you know in the journey of entrepreneur but you know that's where grace just comes along the way and family is such a huge thing and friends is such a huge thing to have alongside you just cheering you on you know and i think people shouldn't be afraid of like maybe I do take this leap of faith and I'm a photographer for just six months and that's only how long God will want me to be a photographer. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe in those six months, God is going to do something in you that affects somebody else in a positive way. You know, like God wants to use every season in your life, the good, the bad, the ugly. And like life is like, there's so much to do in life, you know, and that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. Maybe I won't be an influencer or blogger forever. Like maybe I'll have a boutique or like maybe I'll do this. Like that's just so fun. You know, that's the entrepreneur life. Um, so don't be fearful of seasons and being used in just seasons you know sometimes things don't last forever so i have an interesting thought um whenever you hear about the word entrepreneurship you always think about a person that makes money and for me it's not so much of that it's about um you're not you're not comfortable with where with where you are and you you have a certain skill a certain gift that that god has given you and you're just trusting him uh to take uh, to you know to sustain you uh in that and i love what jennifer is talking about um uh, fear about you know f fighting the uh fighting the fear and also my wife was uh talking about that as well is that w we cannot you know, a person who's who's okay with the nine to five job or or maybe uh, overnight, I always see them unhappy and always just af afraid into taking that that next step. And I see it as entrepreneurship as more than that. You're 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 being uh, free. You're being free in, in Christ because you believe that He's going to take you from one place to another place. And that story is beautiful. And my question is. You know what makes reaching that goal uh, important uh, um, important to being a Christian? I know it's not about you know making money or or being famous or or, or the glamour or, or anything like that. But what makes it what makes your success uh, better and and uplifting? Where it makes your Christian life uh, you know that much more to live. Um. So of course, money is so important. Like. I gotta plan a wedding. No, I need some money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like life is not free. Unfortunately, life is very pricey. Um, so we need money to sustain ourselves. Yeah. Um, but I think that we have to just, as an entrepreneur, you want to know that, you know, your business, it's gonna bring income. But as a Christian, you wanna know your business is gonna affect, you know, like an impact lives and like for good. Mm -hmm. So when you can like intertwine those two, I just think it's just like, oh my God, it's so great. It's such a great feeling to know that, you know, God, Christ can still use me and I can still make money, you know? Um, but hold on, what was the question? What was I answering? <laughs> so I, uh, maybe maybe it gives you maybe it gives like a better perspective you th I, I think of like Abraham right when he's in his family's house and God says I want you to go over there you know uh, it's definitely a leap of faith from you know being where you're, you're comfortable at into being in uh, being taken into into a new spot so you know the, in those regards thinking about that like why is it so important you know you know God uses you know our business life or or that that leap of faith into you know finding a way to to sustain ourselves financially or for our, for our family why is it so important that we uh sh strive for those goals that vision that picture that god gives in our mind okay so i think that for me personally like my eagerness is like of course i have financial goals like i want to hit this number i want to hit that number and of course i want to you know have income but as well like I want to just keep the the drive of impacting people going like like what else how can I use my finances to bless the church to bless like other ministries to bless missionaries like how can I use like those funds to give 
And when your perspective and like your focus is on, you know, just touching people through your finances and like, I want to have more money so I can give more money. I want it so I can give it. You know what I mean? So kind of like shifting your perspective. And that's kind of what keeps me going and keeps me eager to keep pushing just so I can, you know, bless other people. Absolutely. And just adding to what uh, Jen is saying is, you know, when we experience, when we go through, um, you know, the good and the bad, and like she said, the ugly during our journey, we can um, literally be a living testimony to someone else who's going to be um, going through the same journey as us, like in that entrepreneurial life. So it's like if we go through it and we reach these goals, you know, um, as Christians, we can testify also to the people who are also going to be, you know, going through the same journey as we did you know what i mean um so i feel like um you know going through like i've shared my testimony with you know several other entrepreneurs about like just taking that leap and um and going for what you feel like god is calling you to um it's i feel like it's so important to share that and encourage other people like you can do it too you know like like you guys are saying like don't allow fear to keep you crippled you know what i mean so it's like when people see that you're reaching these goals um they're encouraged that you know hey i can do it too mm. you know so i feel like that's another reason why it's so important for me like as a christian we can you know testify and uh, encourage other people too um with our with our own journeys I think that was so key. I think I think the the number one thing that I got is from Diana. And when you were talking, I was thinking about like God wants to empower us. You know, He doesn't want us to feel like we're defeated. That there's nothing that's too small that that God can, uh, cannot do. And 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 that's so uh, encouraging for me. Is that uh, I want to feel like I, I'm empowered and and I could do it. But of course, I want to give the the glory to God. And, but it's just so revealing that God is uh, for us in those moments. You guys uh, mentioned testimonies, and that was kind of my next question. You guys have such a big platform, you know, and you guys get to reach so many people, not just, you know, like Jen said, in the States, but literally around the world. And could you share maybe just one or two God moments or testimonies that um, really just impacted you? personally of someone that reached out to you and said hey this was such an encouragement to me or your platform um god spoke to me through that or even through your photos diana um just some yeah god moment testimonies that just stick out to you for me i know um recently i have and i know our genesis and Dre, like i've shared with you guys separately and asked for prayer like i struggled unfortunately over the last I want to say year, um, I've been struggling with a bit of anxiety, you know, and um, I, I couldn't necessarily pinpoint what it is, but um, it was definitely like what was triggering my anxiety, but it was a feeling like I was just constantly like worried and constantly like uh, fearful, but I couldn't figure out what it was that was keeping me that way. Um, but it wasn't until recently where um, I feel like I had my breakthrough. And um, I really learned how to cope with that anxiety and overcome that anxiety um, through prayer and like meditating on, on Christ. And I feel like um, I shared, like I ended up sharing my experience on my Instagram and I did not expect to receive the kind of like feedback that I did from literally like over a hundred people messaged me like I needed that word like I needed to hear that and to me I was just so taken back because I feel like anxiety and depression is just uh almost like a silent battle like people mm -hmm. just deal with it and we don't talk about it um and I wanted to let everyone know that number one you're not alone and there's hope mm -hmm. you know there's hope and um I remember uh, that this was recent, but like last year, it was sometime like late last year that one of my clients came in and she was dealing with a lot of anxiety, but it's just crazy because I was also dealing with it. But she came into my studio and her exact words were, she literally sat next to me while I was working with her baby. And she sat next to me and she was like, Diana, I just want you to know that I love 
coming to your studio and being in your presence. And to her, it was like my presence. Um, <laughs> I love being in your presence because for some reason, when I'm with you, I feel at such peace. Like I literally walk into your studio and immediately I feel peace. And of course I'm like, that's the Lord, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, but like I, I shared with her, you know, like what I, I was struggling with and how I rest in Jesus and I rest in the Lord so that I can feel his, like his peace. Um, and I was able to encourage her and just throughout like this whole entire year, like she's also like struggled with certain things and like we're constantly talking and I can pour into her and encourage her, you know? So I love that I can make these connections with, um, with my clients and encourage them. Um, I know that like one of your other questions, we'll talk about like, you know, what are my, like my favorite, like Bible verses and like stuff like that. So we'll talk about that later, but you know, there was an, it, it's just so beautiful that we can use our businesses and our connections with the people that we work with on a constant basis to encourage and lift them up and tell them that there's hope and tell them about, you know, how Christ has changed our own lives. So that's one of the reasons, that's one of the ways that I use my business and my platform to, to reach out. <laughs> um, I would have to say that I, there have there has been many God moments like there are times that I just use my platform as just a place where people can drop prayer requests um, I've gotten some wild prayer requests like people have come to me I think it's it's weird because I could be talking to someone like way across like the country and they just confide in me because they're like oh I don't know this girl she's not near me so like she's not gonna tell anyone you know so she, she shared like this one girl shared literally her her whole struggle with her husband and she just confided in me and she literally spilled all the beans of what was going on with her life and how she was struggling in her marriage and how her husband was doing this that that and so in that moment I felt like like okay this is real this is ministry yeah. all right put your hat on like let's go we're going to work let me pray for you right now let's talk what can I do for you and th there have been many God moments like that and I remember there was this one video I posted it was a really silly video it was like um girl you better work for what you got like something really silly like a silly video like um stay motivated I forgot exactly what video it was okay no I think it was like you better boss up, fix your credit, girl, get at it, get your bag up, hit that gym, and get your degree, something like that. It was really <laughs> silly. And so this girl, she messaged me, and she put, like, a whole bunch of crying face emojis, and she was like, oh, my gosh, this is literally, like, I needed this so much because I just, like, I took the leap of faith, and I'm going to go get my degree. I'm going back to school, and, like, this is just confirmation. And just, like, little things like that is, like, that was divinely from the Lord for me to post that video at that exact time for that person who needed it. Um, so yeah, that's a God moment of many, of many, man. I just love social media because of God moments like that. That is awesome. So we're gonna, um, we're gonna switch it up a little bit. We're gonna um, talk on a, a, a interesting topic. It's going, we're gonna talk about based on your Christian uh, lifestyle or, you know, it's, it's kind of weird because, um, you know, back then they were like, oh, you're a church girl, you're a church boy and stuff like that. Now, I guess somehow it's come into the Christian lifestyle, but I want you guys to describe, you know, what is the Christian life or the a life of following Christ? What What is it? Uh, how's it different than, you know, the everyday normal without him? Um, for me, I know, like, just going back to really quickly, uh, um, my my testimony um, with anxiety and like just breaking through that, um, I didn't need a doctor prescribing pills for anxiety. Um, whereas now, as a Christian, you know, you can depend on Christ for that peace, you know, um, and that joy. Um, I didn't want to like visit a doctor and say like, you know, hey, you have anxiety disorder, so take these pills and it'll help you feel better or something like that, you know. Um, as a Christian, I remember a few weeks ago, I was just laying in bed and I felt myself like 
about to have a panic attack. And my husband knew that it was coming. So he just held my hand and I closed my eyes and I was just meditating on Christ. And um, I remember like, as I was meditating, I can literally, I feel like I can literally see Jesus's face. And I just felt such peace, like immediately, I felt a peace over, like overcome me. And then for a split second, I almost like, my eyes were still closed, but I almost like took my attention off of Christ. And then I felt like all of my emotions building back up and like, I'm overcome with all these like thoughts and just such negativity. And then it's like, Jesus was like, eh, like look back at me, right? And then immediately I felt at peace again. And um, right at that moment, I felt like God like put on my heart, like remember Peter and when Jesus called him out into the water. That's the first thing that came to my head. Right? Yeah. When Jesus called him out into the water and when he was looking at Jesus, he was walking on water with no problem. But the moment he turned his attention, he was drowning in, you know, like in all that, in the storm, in the water. And in my, and I feel like God was God telling me, like, when you take your eyes off of me, you're going to drown in your emotions. You're going to drown in your thoughts. But if you keep your eyes on me, you can walk on water. You know, you, I will give you that peace. You know, I will give you that joy. And I feel like at that moment, I was just like, this is exactly what I need to do. This is where I find my peace. This is where I can rest. Um, so I feel like just um, constantly being in prayer and constantly like meditating in the Lord and um, just finding that peace. It, like, I feel like that's where uh, it was like my breakthrough. Like, this is exactly what I needed to happen. And that reminder, like, of course, we always hear about that story and we see it in plays and in movies and all that. But it's like, like I literally lived it. We've all lived it at one point or another, you know? And um, that's my little two cents on that. <laughs> just knowing as a Christian, sorry, just knowing as a Christian that you can, when you're, when you're faced with troubles and you're faced with tribulation, like, you know, you have, you have Christ to, to sustain you and to lift you up. And there's always hope, you know, whereas if you're not, you know, where are you getting your hope from? You know, our hope comes from the Lord and that's our only source. The beautiful part of that story is that even when we do get distracted and even when we do drown, because I drown more than <laughs> I like to count, um, the beautiful part of that story is that Jesus' hand is always outstretching to us. And he's always there with his hand out and it's it's us we're the problem we're the ones that get distracted we get so caught up in our you know emotions i'm speaking as a girl like I'm so caught up in my feelings sometimes and i'm just looking left and right but i always focus on looking straight ahead and at jesus's hand like extended out to me and it's like try and get it together his hand right there <laughs> like wake up boo and um you know, sometimes we just need to be like those horses with like the little visors next to our eyes and just just look forward, just look forward because Jesus' hand is always extending out to us. And that's why you need a man in your life because he talks sense into your know, emotional creatures like you. And, I hope you're cutting that part um, off. <laughs> no, the one, I, I wanted to say this before, but um, um, the one thing that sticks in my mind when I think of, you know, Diana and Drea and even uh, Jennifer too, I remember that one time we went to New York City and we got soup or, or food or something like that. And I don't know why girls are like this, but somehow you guys were in the restaurant and you met this girl. She was drunk. She was like really intoxicated in New York City. And uh, I don't know, she had like a whole bunch of problems. And we go inside, we go outside. I have no idea you guys are talking to the waitress at all. We go outside and the girl's crying and you guys are covering over her and praying for her. And I'm like, I'm like, how, first, how did that even happen? Like I, I was sitting right next to you guys. How did you guys vibe like that? And I know it's just a, the Holy Spirit moment. And it always impressed me. It's like a story I always remember. And I think that's the definition of the Christian lifestyle is that we all don't have it together, 
but we also help one another too. We, we tell that friend or, you know, that, you know, I could tell my friend, my boys, or you guys could tell your girls and you could like, you know what? I struggle too, but here's the remedy. And I think that's the above all essence of what the Christian life is, is that we're, we're not perfect, but we help one another. Uh, Jennifer, um, so what, um, I know, I know you, you, you just exuberate, you know, Christ and you just have so much uh, knowledge for this uh, young, lo lo young, lovely lady such as yourself, but um, you're such a, uh, an encouragement. I think everything you post on social media, you're just, you, you never forget where you come from. You, you're centered on, on, on Christ. Um, what is what is your definition of the Christian lifestyle? Why is it means so important to you for you to just let that flow through you? Um, well, I would have to say like when you just when you love Jesus and like you truly just like feel so overwhelmingly thankful for who he is and what he's done in your life, there is no way to stay silent about that. Like if some, like I was asking actually uh, my father the other day, I was like, if somebody told you to start, to stop talking about Jesus, what would you do? And he was like, kill me. I don't care. I love Jesus. I talk about him all day, you know? So I kind of just, from my parents, from my grandparents, um, I had just always had that instilled in me that you share your faith because without it, you are nothing. You are absolutely nothing. So, um, to live a Christian lifestyle for me personally is just proclaiming who Jesus is like no matter what and being confident in that and just also living not to please my personal self like I always try to keep that at the core of everything your life is not for like of course your life you know you enjoy it but at the end of the day it's about reaching others for Christ so I try my best. We are not perfect by any means. Oh my gosh, I mess up so many times daily, but God's grace is literally so sufficient, like scripture says. So I try my best to live my life according to the Lord and not be afraid of what other people have to say, of if my walk with Christ is messy or not, you know, just always keeping that at the center. I do stuff for the Lord and I do stuff so that God could be glorified and people can be touched. Like, for example, I just posted about my engagement. Like, it's just like such big news. But even in that post, it wasn't solely about me. In that post, I was like, this is a significant moment, like just to reflect that God is a provider, that for the girl who's like desperate and wants like her husband to come and like they have lost all hope, like do not lose hope. Like this, this is, this, it will happen. Like God is for you. And just like always keeping that in my mind, like it's not about you. It's about impacting other people and making sure that they know that God is for them and always encouraging them. And yeah, just always for people. <laughs> Speaking of, um, you guys brought up a few times like scripture and the Bible and what are your go-to um, like book or go-to scripture verses in the Bible that you just recite over and over and over again in your mind. It's plastered on your wall. It's plastered in your Bible, like highlighted, underscored a hundred times. What are your um, go-to verses that just encourage you um, yeah, through through your walk. And give us an expository, the author, the the date it's been written on. <laughs> the thematic. The bad. <laughs> like I have so many. Um, I think my number one would have to be Ephesians. I believe it's chapter three. I don't remember the exact verse, but it says God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above or is it Galatians one of those <laughs> God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask think or imagine like that's my favorite just when you feel like you you just can't God is a provider he's able to do way more than you can on your own so I love that verse um I know uh, like Jen said there's there's a bunch but I know my husband and I always talk about um Romans 8 Romans 8, I forget the verse, but where it says um, um, that God works all things for good, you know, um, 
we we struggle throughout our lives constantly right and sometimes we question like why like why do we have to go through this like why you know we question just why and it's just a constant reminder of like god always works all things not some things all things together mm -hmm. for good right um for those who love um christ but the other one too that has been like my favorite since forever since like I was young and I constantly remind myself is Psalm 139 you know um that we're fearfully and wonderfully made and I feel like in uh I have to constantly remind myself you know like just because again I struggled with just being down on myself constantly um just so it's just such a beautiful reminder that God has so intricately and beautifully created us like he took the time to make us in such a way um and i've been able to encourage also my clients with like it i feel like it just fits so perfectly with you know with what i do and capturing um a woman during her pregnancy like so many times i work with women who are um who don't like love their bodies who are very self-conscious about themselves uh you know as a woman our bodies go through so many different changes during pregnancy and i feel like um it's a way it's a it's a beautiful reminder like even through that like just knowing you're fearfully and wonderfully made so perfectly like so intricately and in your womb like th there's literally life you know so of course our bodies are going to go through all these different changes um but i feel like this verse is such a beautiful encouragement to those women i feel like when i share with them you know we always end up crying together because i share my own testimony with you know um uh my own self-image and things like that so um that's another way how you know god uses uh me through the business where we uh, encourage women you know to love themselves and to know how beautiful they are and just be um just embracing that you know always hitting on a topic somehow like uh encouraging and uh so uh the next question is what is one of the hardest challenges God has delivered you from and if you have felt like you have already already answered it you don't have to uh, you know talk about it again but um, something where something in line where people are saying like wow well, wow you know you go through this too and, it, and it's encouraging for me because um, you know sometimes we look at platforms and we look at your platform we look at John's platform and we always look at wow like you know they've got it all together or you look at jen's like man she got engaged and she's you know she's doing her thing you yeah. know that kind of stuff and many people don't see the challenges um you know either personally or business-wise or a fam whatever it may be people don't see the you know behind the scenes behind any of those posts so that's why that question i feel will help so many people that like you said um wow they go through that too they are human too they're christians what and they go through that you know i feel like people have one standard and they don't see the other stuff absolutely mm -hmm. I, I i definitely um touched on the topics throughout our conversation uh, throughout our conversation but um i always say it's not always like running through fill fields of tulips and lilies and like you know sunshine all the time it's not it's, it's definitely rough, you know. Um, I feel like with me personally, um, my biggest struggle has been like the anxiety, you know, and I don't know if it's just the, the fear of not being good enough or fear of like losing it all or fear of like, you know, pursuing biz my business and, you know, spending all this time and energy and, and making it successful that I lose sight of like my family time and stuff like that. You know, there's just so much. Um, so I feel like maybe that's just what has been weighing so heavy on my heart over the last year. But, you know, I'm good now. Like, God's back to the scene. But, but between the anxiety and, um, you know, the finances, of course, you know, uh, where we had a really, really difficult time in the beginning. Um, you know, but we've seen God's hand move through like my husband and, and, and blessing him with his career. And then of course the business, um, but just staying like steadfast and just trusting, I feel like that's, what's really, um, you know, helped us along, along the way, but definitely the biggest heart, the hardest thing for me has been like the anxiety and, um, the finance, the finances. I feel like that was, you know, 
because it's expensive to be in this industry. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, no I mean, I your, your lens alone costs more than everything I, I got. I don't ever let Diana and our tennis talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, no, no, no. Yeah, I feel Grand Cherokee coming. <laughs> <laughs> So but God is faithful. He's so faithful. I think personally, like, um, sorry, I just moved something that probably was so loud. <laughs> uh, I think personally, one of the things that kind of is the foundation of really why I do what I do is kind of because of what I've encountered and like the things that I've gone through in um, in my younger teenage years. Like, when people look at me, they're like, why is she like so so confident she takes pictures all the time she posts all the time and they they would think that I was naturally like that um but when I was younger I was so insecure I mean so insecure literally everything I hated my body hated my face I had terrible acne my teeth were a mess like literally like I was the most insecure girl in the world but you know God really took me through that season of that teenage kind of puberty all that things insecurity and he really like just reminded me after I grew through that that it's not about your exterior beauty or any of that it's truly what's inside so when I portray things on my Instagram platform like the like beauty you know it's it's nice to dress up it's nice to be you know have makeup beauty tutorials and stuff like that but like I said earlier it's all about what's inside and your relationship with Christ and for me like i I share that story because I know there are young girls out there or even um, young adults, uh, 30 year olds, you know, we all have insecurities, but we push past those insecurities and we're confident because Christ lives in us. And that's the only thing that matters. So, yeah, I think that's that's one of the things that I've struggled with in the past. But God used that to build the foundation for my business. That's so beautiful. Thank you. And both your platforms are blessing and encouraging so many people, whether they reach out to you or not. I know it's a platform that just glorifies God and uh, just opens the pathway for people just to... That's what, what I love about you both is just that you allow a platform to not just be, oh, uh, this is just pictures and not engaging. You guys are just so engaging with your platform and so many people who do say what's your advice on this or hey i need prayer on this and stuff and you guys are taking it to that next level of using it for god's glory you know so i applaud you guys on that um our last question is our our hearts our life is missions and we happen to be missionaries <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do <laughs> and my question to you guys is i know that jen was recently here come back um and we're trying to get diana here but no <laughs> um but i know diana has also been on a missions trip um how has that i know for me personally why we're here today is because of that one missions trip that i did and god just said this is what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life so how has that one missions trip changed your perspective changed your your world view or how just just changed you and your perspective well i'll go first um sorry diana i thought you were about to speak and I'm like, ah. <laughs> so i went to mozambique it's actually been a year um since i've been there so that was my first ever missions trip and wow it was ah it was amazing it was it was hard it was hot it was, it was hot. You got, you got it nothing but hot. hot water to drink. <laughs> oh my gosh. It, but it was life changing, life changing. Like I, I just felt like, like when you go to a different place in the world, I feel like you feel God in a whole different way. And it's so crazy. Just the experiences that I had, like sleeping outside in tents and like the villages, like amazing um i would have to say wait what what, what was the exact wording of the question How does it I want change to this right. your perspective or also would you encourage someone to um i'll throw that in there to to take a missions trip <laughs> yeah everybody should go to mozambique <laughs> <laughs> so i i think that it's changed it changed my life it really did it like people like always say like 
you know, the kids in Africa, you gotta be thankful for what you got and stuff like that. But truly, you really do have to be thankful for what you got because people live like, not like Americans everywhere. Like not everyone lives like this. We are spoiled in America. We are rotten spoiled. So just a whole new like gratitude perspective in my life. And I really, I genuinely like, I can't wait to go back and visit you guys. And you guys are doing such a great job. Like literally, I'm so proud of you guys. Oh, so man. proud. You're gonna make me cry. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> this is about you. Yeah. yeah, it's about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so um for me i it definitely like the mission trip that i went on um uh, was when i was like 16 17 and we went to mexico and that was that was an experience that really was an experience um that is good because i um i honestly i need it i really really needed that because so often we we do take so many things for granted uh we don't realize like the the needs that people have and i'm not only speaking of um like the physical needs you know um and the financial needs but but the spiritual needs you know um when i was um in mexico we actually, we stayed in an orphanage um, in Reynosa, Mexico. And one thing that stuck out to me so much was, um, and especially as a teen, that they, the little kids there, they had absolutely nothing. And what they did have, like the little bit that they did have, they wanted to give. And the little bit that like, even with their, um, with like how much they did need things, um, they still were just, they exuded so much joy. Um, and to me that took, that like made me take a step back and, and, and examine my own heart and examine myself because so like we had, I had gotten a call when I was out in Mexico, how they broke into, and it was towards the end of the week that we were there, but um, they had broke into our home that, you know, here in Jersey, and they stole like all of like our jewelry and like a whole bunch of things. And um, I did have a ring that was handed down to me from like my grandfather who, you know, the, his father gave to him. Like it was like a generational thing and they stole that too. And um, of course, you know, I was hurt because of that, but because of what I just experienced and how these kids have nothing yet, they had so much joy really made me like I was like you know what it's okay I'm okay with with them taking everything you know what I mean like I it didn't bother me as much as it would have had I not gone you know what I mean um so I feel like it did give me a whole new perspective on on life um with missions I feel like I I don't feel I don't feel called to missions <laughs> <laughs> I don't necessarily feel called to missions, but I, I'm so thankful to the Lord that um, he does place this call on, on you know, people's life because because the world needs Jesus. Yeah. The world desperately needs Jesus now more than ever. And um, and I love that he placed you guys uh, there because um, you guys are literally incredible. You guys are, are so awesome. You're so cool. Um, <laughs> I want I do want to go. <laughs> I want to go and I want to do like, you know, <laughs> my husband and I were talking, we're going to do like half missions, half vacation. So I'm joking. So I'm just joking. But, um, you know, I, I want to encourage people that like when people think missionaries, they automatically think like, you know, Africa and, yeah. you know, Asia or what, going to like these crazy places, but mission, missionary work can be done here too. Mm -hmm. And I feel yeah. like that's one thing that we have to keep in mind that, you know, we were given this great command, you know, to go and spread the gospel and spread the word, you know, whether it's, you know, here in our, our local, you know, towns and like to the States, you know, but also to the world. And I feel like we all have that call you know, we not necessarily, we're not necessarily mission, missionary, like, like actual missionary, but we are technically all missionaries, you know, like we all have yeah. the command. And I feel like uh, we all just have to remember that and, um, and spread the gospel, like with our lives and encourage people, like we have to be, so I feel like my heart, 
my heart is um overwhelmed with joy that you know you guys were called to the mission field and that you guys are out there but also um it's just a constant reminder that you know we also we have to do our part also and um you know not only with our givings you know which we so happily support you guys we love being able to support you guys um you know but just you know in what we do here too so yeah i love what you said that um missions isn't necessarily like we get that concept get on a plane and just go and um although yeah that's that's god's call for certain people but we only look at missions or missions life in that perspective your mission field is your platforms mm -hmm. like what you're doing um, photography and what you post and stuff that's that's your mission field. yeah you guys are possibly reaching more people than we could ever yeah, do yeah and jennifer with her blogs and reaching out to so many people with insecurity and so so on and so forth man that's your mission field and we so forget that that our mission field starts in our very own backyard like the neighbors next door to us, the guy at the Dunkin' Donuts that we see, you know, all the time. Not here, we don't have Dunkin' Donuts, but in your, <laughs> in your, <laughs> in your field. <laughs> Why didn't you take us? <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is we so forget that, like at the supermarket, so on and so forth, that we, you know, so many people need to hear about Jesus everywhere we go. And that's what God, God entrusts us with is his authority and his word to tell others about him. So I applaud you guys for doing that. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for you guys, for your, for your time. Uh, thank you for being a part of uh, our, our YouTube. Our YouTube is like our my great my and Andreas hopefully too great, uh, greatest treasure i just love recording and and i also love talking and I we really we do really uh, uh miss you guys so we're hoping uh we could, you guys could give us like a virtual hug i'm gonna pretend this is you guys and because i we, we certainly do miss you guys um for real, for real. and uh, we're counting down the days one more year I'm trying not to cry, but let's change the subject. So this is our your opportunity to plug yourselves in on your social media. Where can people follow you, see you guys, what you do? Um, Jen, where, where can people follow you? So I have a website. It's forevergenifer.com. And then my Instagram is at forevergenifer. My name is like... A little weird, but J E N Y P H E R. So, yeah. Um, I do have a website, uh, loveprintphotography.com, or you can find me on Instagram at loveprintphotography. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for staying tuned in this uh, uh, episode of Conversations Abroad. Uh, this healthy and deep uh, conversation is definitely helped us understand the Christian lifestyle and the entrepreneurship uh, that these ladies uh, have and uh, they just have so much wisdom uh, and knowledge and I know that they're doing just as much mission work as we are. Uh, stay, stay tuned and subscribe to the channel and hit a like if you, if you did like it. We'll leave the link uh, in the description below. Uh, forever Jennifer, she also has a YouTube as well and she be vlogging it up just like the, like the Matos is and we're going to try to maybe talk uh, Diane into getting the YouTube as well. We'll, we'll see about that. Thank you and peace. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching another episode of Conversations Abroad. If you want to see our previous episodes, you could click on the thumbnail. If you want to see future content on what we provide, you could click on the subscribe button, hit the bell for further notification. Thank you for watching.